Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Lee Robertson. And it wasn't until I was like halfway through eating it and even realised it was past its well. Oh, hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. What have you got for us this week, Lee? Well, this week we have some news about a gay writer and we have uh, news about possibly a, a television series returning. Plus, we've got Crafty Queens. Oh, great, Crafty Queens. Um, and we've even got a game you can join along with as well. But on screen now, you can see our social media. Just search for at the Cud TV. And as the names of people who have popped up on our comment box scroll along the bottom of the screen, it's time to go over for Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> If I started going, Chanel, Chanel, what would you think? Well, first reaction was to punch you in the face. <laughs> okay. And then the second is that woman and that bird. That woman and that bird. That right. bird that flew off. Yeah, she had it out the in the garden mean and it flew woman. away. The mean woman. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, yes, the African grey parrot, Chanel, flew Chanel. away. Yes. Um, it's a viral sensation in 2020. Right. Okay. Um, well, she's back in the news okay. for a slightly different reason. Is it dead? No, it's not parrot related at all. Um, she has been arrested. Chanel or the woman? Oh, the woman, not <laughs> the, the parrot has been arrested. Yes. Asbo parrot. <laughs> Asbo parrot. Well, no. Um, having basically 230 kilograms of pot. What a shocker! <laughs> Yeah. Who didn't see that coming? <laughs> that she be arrested or that she smoked it? Well, all of the above, <laughs> yes. Yep, yeah. um, nearly um, three quarters of a million pounds worth of marijuana. How can you possibly have... How much is three and a half whatever million pounds worth of marijuana? <laughs> 792,000. Is it, is it how much... But, how, but, but <laughs> how, is that like a huge, massive wedge? Yeah, she kind of like had a, a kitchen wedge. knife that she yeah, saw bits of. <laughs> <laughs> a huge cheese wheel of pot. Two hundred thirty-seven kilograms. It was. Again, I don't know. That I, I need. So I need think, like a physical. Okay, like a bag of sugar. Yes. Is two kilos. Okay. So like, a hundred and thirty. One hundred fifteen sugar. Bags of sugar. Okay. Right. Worth of pot. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. personal use. No. No. Where, where has she managed to find She grew it, didn't oh, she? Where did she find it? She was walking along one day, just rolling she around grew the it. street. She's just picking bits up off the street before you knew it. She had a lot. Fertilise my parrot shit. <laughs> I don't know whether it's fertilise my parrot shit, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. So, yeah, she's going to trial. Who's going to look after Chanel, then? Well... Because she's going, damn. Well, if she's guilty, she will do. Well, something tells me this is possibly not a first offence. <laughs> Are you besmirching her character? I'm <laughs> you don't just suddenly have 792k worth of cannabis in your house and fit your first offence. <laughs> uh, oops, I thought I was ordering... Maybe that's what Chanel was doing. She was flying away and picking up from places. Quite possibly. Maybe yeah. she was a carrier pigeon mm. slash parrot. So is she, is she um, on remand? Or is she <laughs> remand? <laughs> is she is she out on bail? Yeah, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's not currently at, in incarcerated. Okay. Um, she's 43. I would have thought that was a, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Have that was a, a kind estimate. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's actually 43. Sandra. Sandra. Sandra's her name. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Anyway, moving on. How do you feel about Portaloo? I don't care for them. You don't care for them? No. What about in a pinch? <laughs> if I have to use one, I will. Okay. But I don't like. I don't anyone like a portal. Yeah, a portal. No, but I just don't. I just don't. Just don't? No. No. Okay. Um, well, this is a story about a, a shortage of portaloos. Is yes, there? There is. Well, specifically because some have been stolen <sighs> while full. Full of poo poo. Poop and wee. <laughs> Purposefully. <laughs> Why is he chuckling away the word poop? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm eight years old inside my head. Poop and wee wee. Um, yeah. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. Um, so this is a story that just after a festival, right, someone broke into the festival grounds and stole all the portaloos because they're worth a lot of money. They're worth like a thousand pounds each. Okay. Um, uh, basically, the three counties toilet hire 
mm. um, I've basically lost 90% of their stock of toilet because they've just been stolen, right? Um, the owners have, have tried to make this mass media campaign about it because they want to make them, as they've put, too hot to move. Want to make it so obvious that you know they're stolen poor to lose that no one will be able to use them. But I was thinking the only thing that's basically saying that they own the portal is a big sticker on the door. They're not. I wouldn't imagine it's the easiest thing to try and to steal. No. You're not going to pop it in your pocket, is it? It's like carried out with with your mates. Yeah. You know, it's coordinated, so they actually they broke into some they broke some locks, drove in with a, a big van, and had to like load yeah. them up on the van. But they would have been heavy because they would have been filled with full of piss pee. and shit. <laughs> And, peers, and, think, but yeah. and other things because it's at a festival, so it will have vom in there. Probably have a street value. Ugh. Yeah. Not a pleasant thing. No. They're not. They're not. What are they going to do with them? But rent them out. Do you think if they've stolen basically forty portaloos, right? So that's forty thousand pounds worth of portaloo. They'd have to empty them first, though. And that's that's a lot going down your loo. Taking a bucket and... Is there not like um, a, a bucket or something that you pull out and yeah, just yeah. T tip it out? Yeah, but where are they going to empty it out? It's on the side of the road, I would imagine. <laughs> It'd be easy to find because they just follow the gallons. Like a, there's like a gallon of slurry going <laughs> yeah. across the road. Gallons of untreated sewage going down yeah. the 57. I, yeah. I, I, they're not... You think by now they would have improved the design of a portal, wouldn't they? They've got better over time. No. So I remember portals used to have a handle. You had to pump. Now they've got a foot pump, so you have to touch mm. whatever else is you know, touched. They've got hand sanitizer and it'll sink. They don't have lights in them either. Some do. Mm. Most of them have got this really light roof, though, so it lets the light in. Oh, well, lovely. Lovely. I, <laughs> I just... I just... I just... Full on man, man nappy up. Man nappy up. <laughs> Full on man nappy up. Whenever, if there's ever going to be a situation where there isn't a workable toilet, okay. That's just my tip to the listeners and the viewers. Wear a nappy. Wear a nappy. Don't use a. Don't go in a portaloo. I like that advice because if everybody does that, then the portaloos will be nice for me to use. Yeah, they'd be redundant. Though. Yeah, yeah. Stole them <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> That's the plan. Let's destroy a business model by wearing lots of nappies. Let's turn them into something nice, like aquariums. You know, like they do with but you them. You can't see through them. <laughs> no, just bear with me for a second. Okay, go on. Judgmental. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like you know, like telephone boxes that are known for having lots of glass in them. But then you just cut holes in it, wouldn't you? Take the door off. Yeah. Put the fish tank inside it. Oh, so a fish tank inside a portal? Yeah. Right. Okay. Not. I thought you were just going to fill them up with water. No, just you use that. You use it as as the encasing. Okay. Or put some shelves in there and have like community libraries. I've seen that, and that looks yeah. quite cute. But then I thought it does, but not probably not in a portal. Well, you're in the right place for a read. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, and if you like to basically have a shit while reading, why not drop us a picture? It's at the Good TV on social media. Please don't send us a picture of that. Um, and it's now time for our story of the week. Yeah. No. If you were building something and you had a protester, so someone saying, I don't want this to be built, how would you handle it? I'd say... <laughs> <laughs> You're proud of yourself with that, aren't you? Right close to the face <laughs> like that. <laughs> if they can feel your spittle. Yeah. I will build this 17-foot tribute to Barbie <laughs> in my front garden. And you can sit on it. That's what I would say. <laughs> on the on the on, on the very, on the very pinnacle top of, the... of it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's a story about a, a nun in France. <laughs> what is the face for then? Nuns. They're just very problematic, aren't they? <laughs> they are very problematic, apparently. If they're not floating above the ground. <laughs> just the ground. Floating above the ground, scaring people, <laughs> coming out of the walls. Doing that kind of stuff. Buying all the suitcases. Nuns and ghosts. <laughs> I've, have you ever seen a nun's foot? Yes. I haven't. Because they're floating. Oh, great idea as a nun. Well, she no, was. she's not. She was. She's not now. She's dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> dead nun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a story about a nun in France who was um, basically beat up a climate change protester. She, she beat up... <laughs> Wasn't change. beaten up. No, by... none. 
beat the living shit out of okay. a, a climate change protester who didn't want the church to be built. Lo I'm loving it. <laughs> and she's like a traditional nun with a yeah. wimple. A wimple? A wimple. Yeah. Um, yeah. A nice action shot. Yeah, literally beating them up, basically, because he's there going, um, this church is going to be built on some, some like, um, communal ground and he wasn't happy about it. And okay. Basically, she's like, no, the church is getting built. And Lamped him. him. Pretty much and that is from God. Direct from that heaven into my fist. <laughs> God asks why I'm hitting you. <laughs> yeah. God does not ask why. Oh, well, you know, unless they're building the church out of asbestos or something Love like that. You can't say asbestos. Can you not say asbestos? No, asbestos. Asbestos. Yeah. You're is that how you say yeah. it? <laughs> you always okay. it makes me smile. Then, you know, whatever. Okay. That's all from the bus this week. Thank you very much. And if you've seen a nun hovering above the ground, let us know. They don't hover, but never mind. Um, coming up next, we have Lee and the bringings of the celebrity news. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's brace ourselves for the show biz with Lee. So we've spoken about this before, Russell T. Davis, well, okay, yeah. and his stance on gay actors only playing gay characters. That's what he believes. He said that. Is, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he's basically he's been at something called the um, Iris Prize LGBTQ Plus Film Festival, mm -hmm. where he was talking about this kind of subject. That's him talking about it at the said festival. Um, hello. <laughs> so he said he's absolutely sticking. <laughs> The hand action. He looks like he's screwing a light bulb in. He does. Yeah. He's having a bit of a dance. Do, 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 do. Um, he's saying that he's absolutely sticking to his opinion that gay actors should play gay characters. Mm -hmm. um, so he's saying gay as gay casting in is what is what he will be following from now on. Okay. Um, so in 2021, he again stated that there was this debate of who should play gay characters. Mm -hmm. So he's saying it's much more complicated than what people think, but he's absolutely sticking to it. He says, I know I'm just one voice. I know there's a million other ways to do it. I know a straight, act a straight actor can portray a gay character brilliantly. I know certainly a gay actor can play a straight character brilliantly, but my stance is that if we're going to be portraying gay characters on television and films, they should be played by gay characters. I don't particularly agree. I'm a bit like, mm. is it not just whoever's best for the part? That's what I think as well. Um, it's, it's also kind of question about what it is to act gay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and he has a genuine problem with that. It kind of like, if, they're, if, they, if that portrayal falls into stereotypical gay... Yeah, but it depends how the character is written. So it's yeah. like when you think about um, queer folk in the UK, and Anthony Cotton was this very, very camp, mm. very out there gay character playing. That, that's fine. If Anthony Cotton turned out to be straight and played that character as it was written like that, mm. then great too. Mm. If someone goes in and purposefully camps it up and does that, it's like um, James Corden. He he has a a standard. This is a gay person character. Yes, that is a stereotype. Yeah, and isn't like particularly a character. At no, all for that how it's written. No, that's just how he portrays gay people, and that I have a problem with. But, mm. Yeah, as long as it's how the character is written, that's all that is. And that's kind of it. Kind of you kind of throw it back and say, right, okay, if only gay actors can play gay parts, then gay characters can't play straight parts. Mm -hmm. that, you, you kind yeah. of have to kind of, black, I suppose. Um, you know, Doctor Who is is eminently back. Nakuti Gatwa is going to be the new Doctor who who identifies as queer. That's, a, that's an intimate photograph, isn't it? I'm sexually attracted to Doctor are Who. You, are, you sexually, are you sexually attracted to that photograph in general? Yeah. With the, with, he needs to button his cardio up. He's going to get a terrible chill on his nipples. Um, well, I've got hands, I can warm them. You warm them up with your tongue, will you? Hands, um, I said. <laughs> with your hands, he said. So it basically said, there's still not enough of representation. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near enough of that. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree with him on. I think there's not enough point. representation of everybody no. from the LGBTQ plus community. But um, I think as you know, gay men have got a lot more representation. 
But mm. I think there's a lot more we could be doing for our trans siblings and mm. um, more lesbians and more bisexual visibility as well. Yeah. So, you know, that's something to ponder on. That's a relatively serious thing from me. I know. It doesn't always happen, that. Anyway, let's move on. Interspersed with nipples. <laughs> Interspersed with nipples. Let's move to something frivolous and, and ridiculous. Okay. Um, so, Jennifer Saunders... Oh, not your outfit, then. <laughs> ...has revealed that there are plans uh -huh. for a spin-off of Absolutely Fabulous. OK. OK. So, um, she said on her... So, she does this podcast with Dawn French called Titting About... Which is, it's a fabulous name. Um, the picture of them titting about there. Um, and she has revealed that there is an AbFab-related project that could potentially have its first draft by the end of the year. OK. So, talking on this, this podcast, we're talking about all sorts of different things. It will, came, it will contain some AbFabness, but not totally AbFab, and will be a film or a series. OK. Ooh. So, it's really just an idea right now. Could be a film, could be a series. It's gonna, it's, but it's going to happen. Um, she said, she, I need to write a film or a series based on AbFab, and I want to do something related. So not necessarily with Patsy and Adina. It could mm. be other characters. Bubble. A bubble series. That would be very good. You don't, you're not convinced. Uh, didn't she um, die? Didn't Bubble die? Was it Bubble that died? No. No, it wasn't. June Whitfield uh, died. No, not June Whitfield. I wasn't thinking that I would get get Bubble confused with um, Catherine O'Hearn. Oh, okay. No. No, she's dead. Um, so Dawn French pushed her and said, well, what, what can we expect? And she's like, the first draft could be written by the end of the year. I'm, uh, I can't say anything else about this. Because she's not written it. The first draft will be done by the end of the year. She said she's shaking on it. There's a deal. There's a new AbFab Ab product. She's, I think she's done a deal with somebody mm -hmm. to write something by the end of the year. Um, <laughs> Do you think it's by the end of the year? <laughs> are we nearly at the end of the year? We are at the end of the year. It's she's not, she's not probably probably. writing it now. Yeah. She said that, that when, she, when Dawn said, will Joanna Lumley be in it, Jennifer went, possibly. Mm. No, she's not written it yet. <laughs> um, the, you know, the... The film from a couple of years ago, that wasn't the best. No, because AbFab is very of its time. And I think that if she tried to do it now, then it wouldn't work. They re so a couple of years ago, they did, they did a documentary series together mm -hmm. called Absolutely Champers, which was basically a real-life version of Absolutely Fabulous, where they travelled around France drinking champagne and reviewing it, yep. which is the kind of nearest that we've got. Um, mm, I'm very excited. Obviously, AbFab... Now, over to somebody who has not had that trouble because they finished their thing that they were writing and it's ready to be published. Okay. RuPaul. Oh. So RuPaul is apparently is revealing much of himself in his new memoir, The House of Hidden Meanings. Okay. That's RuPaul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just in case anyone wants to Just in case this is a <laughs> That's the cover of the book. No, it's um, a memoir. It's a memoir. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's his latest memoirs. These are other memoirs he's had out. Um, so this is out now, okay. should you wish to purchase it. Um, two and a half years, it's finally here, my memoir. I'm so excited, so anxious at the same time because I reveal so much of myself. So if you turn to the middle of the book, mm -hmm. it's a picture of his penis. Okay. There isn't. I made that up. Um, <laughs> he said, you know, this world today... <laughs> You were, you were like, oh. <laughs> um, so this world today feels so hostile and it's such a scary place to be vulnerable in. But I did it, so get ready. So according to, to the to the blurb, it's gooped, gooped gagged, and stripped raw. I don't, I don't think I like the sound of that. Sounds like a weekend to me. Yeah. Um, so all the, the usual kind of like self-care bullshit that he speaks, mm -hmm. you know, um, vulnerability is a strength and yeah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, we just want to know the dirty details of what he did when he was younger. Yeah. Mm. It, 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 in there? It, it's a memoir promises to evolve into 40 years of his drag life. Here he is with his husband. Mm -hmm. um, he's a, quite an attractive gentleman. He is. Um, he strips away all artifice. Oh, which means Take somebody wasn't there off. to do his makeup that day, so <laughs> he couldn't do it. Um, stuff from being um, a kid growing up in San Diego, mm -hmm. relationship with his father, that's him back in the sort of like early 80s when he moved to New York, mm -hmm. his punk and drag scenes of Atlanta, 
husband Judge Labar, you know, stuff. 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 Um, I'm sure that there'll be photographs in it. I don't know if it'll mention certain drags. So I don't think don't there's anything to do with drag race. Okay. It's more his early Earlier stuff. Life. So, because you kind of like forget the stuff that he has done mm -hmm. before drag race. In 1995, he was the first face of Mac Cosmetics. Glam Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. A drag queen yeah. that that fronted a major campaign in 1995, um, and that was in age of the HIV AIDS charities. Yep. Um, I would imagine there'll probably be a film made. Yeah. Um. So RuPaul's story is actually quite interesting because RuPaul was one of the club kids of the mm. in New York. Um. So was part of that whole scene. So like uh, Michael Alig and. Um, Jane St. James and that kind of... Jane St. James! James St. James. I could draw my face. He hasn't done that for a very long done time. done that for a very, very long time. A very long um, time. Is he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He does a, he does a podcast uh, with other, other elder gays. Elder gays. Talk about <laughs> the week. I did recently watch a documentary about the club kids. Okay. The one that killed somebody and chopped him up. Now, was it the documentary or was it the movie? No, it was the documentary. Documentary, okay, cool. Mm. Um, not the so, film with McCoy and Culkin. So the Michael Ehrlich story. Mm. Uh, Michael Ehrlich now, when he was, well, not now, but when he was in prison. Mm. It's really interesting, I've seen it too. Well, it's as interesting as chopping somebody up can be. Um, no, when but... you're off your head on Ketsu. <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah, laughs> but it's like, but it's got a lot of the, the history and the stories behind it and things. So, you, mm. so I know, um, in the early 2000s in you know, Manchester, there was that kind of semi-resurgence of the club kids scene. People being chopped up? Yes. Okay. Love a trend. <laughs> Love a trend of, of dismemberment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's like early 2000s, having that high idea of a club kid kind of reemergence. So it, it it spoke a lot to me, that, that documentary. Mm. And that's the end of this week's showbiz news. But stick around, because coming up, we have a quiz for Lee in our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud, and this week we're going to play Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this one is for the man who once inserted a cream egg into his, well, let's say an orifice. It's Lee. Off you pop. My mouth. Is it an orifice? It counts. Game of the week. So Lee's going to spin the lazy Susan and then ask me a question. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Round and round it goes. Where, Where it, it stops, stops. No, nobody yeah, knows. Yeah. Oh, hum that tune. I know that's one of your personal favourites. It is, yeah. Isn't I can it? see the th sort of thumb interference as well, so thank okay. you. Okay. Oh, I don't know it. You don't know it. I don't know this song. Well, that doesn't normally stop you. Shall I try it? Try it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna have to do another one. Okay. That was supposed. That was yummy, by Justin Bieber. Oh, okay. Wouldn't even know. <laughs> Yummy by Justin Bieber. I can't, I'm gonna have to nin and air it, I can't hum it. Okay. Automatic. The gallery have got it. Um, please stop. It's not called please stop. Well, I don't want to say to you don't stop after you made that noise. It's yes, it is. It is don't stop. Don't stop believing, believing. by Journey. Yeah. Soundtracks. Up Where We Belong by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warnes was most famously featured in which movie? Right up where we belong. Where do, 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 do. 
da, oh, da, ba, da, ba, we can be heroes. Moulin Rouge. Oh, pardon me. Moulin Rouge. It wasn't Moulin Rouge. It was, I was just singing it then. It's from Moulin Rouge. It might have been in Moulin Rouge, but it wasn't originally in Moulin Rouge. They originally said most famously. Uh, film with... Um, it was the one that allegedly put a, uh, a gerbil up his bum. <laughs> Richard Gere? What's he all spawn? We bit the head off a bat, you two. Um, Richard Gere. That Richard, Gere yeah. Richard Gere. Armageddon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, very famous. Walks into the into the factory dressed in in his soldier outfit, and then. Picks the woman up. What are you laughing at? No. I've just got that Armageddon story in my head. Um, an officer and a gentleman. Yes! <laughs> an Aussie old boy. <laughs> Soundtracks again. Awesome Mix Volume 1 is the soundtrack album for which Marvel movie? Guardians of the Galaxy. It is! I haven't seen that film. You know, it's really good. It's in any of them. You wouldn't enjoy them. No. Does it involve unicorns? No. Rock and pop. Or fisting. <clears throat> Which band had a 2002 hit with She Will Be Loved? She will be loved. Um. Oh, I say Keen. No, you'd be wrong. He's a douche. The lead singer is a douchebag. Not fly. Certified. He's American. Lots of tattoos. Oh, mm. the, the script. No. You're not having any more choices. Chances. Maroon 5. Ah. Uh. Mm. Oh. Out of my way. Soundtracks again. Uh, maybe put weight on that. <clears throat> oh, what song do John Travolta and Uma Thurman dance to during a dance competition in Pulp Fiction? Is it the only song I can ever remember from Pulp Fiction? Isn't it even from Pulp Fiction? I get Kill Bill and Rusted Wheel in my head. Yeah. No idea. Uh, you Never Can Tell by Chuck Berry. Okay. I don't know that song. I'm vaguely aware of the dance scene. Soundtracks again. Did you just move it? No. Mm. Smash Mouth. Cause, coincidentally, one of your former grinder profile names had a hit with all star but when in which animated movie was it most famously heard hang on you rock star the be do do ba ba do nya nya think um it's an it's an animated one yeah just said that yeah um green Lives in a lives in a swamp. Friend, who's a donkey. I was thinking the Muppets. No. <laughs> Why donkey. Did that what are you doing, donkey? That's my impression of him. Right, that's your Shrek impression because it's awful. There you go, yeah. Shrek. Not good impression, Shrek. Um, hum that tune. All oh, right, I think I might only know like one sen sentence, one line out of this. Um, I'm gonna have to do the do 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 do. No, that wasn't it. That was just the one I just did. Yeah. Um, oh, no, 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 I don't know it. All the small things. Yes. Right no, How? You get those two confused. Good, good, what's that? <laughs> it's not my genre. It's not your genre now. It, well, it says 90s, but... Oh, oh, 
ow, 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 rock and pop. <laughs> that is subtle, that. It was, wasn't it? Formed in 2000 from a Petri dish, Matt Willis, James Bourne and Charlie Simpson are members of which pop rock band? You know when we last played this game? Yeah. Did you put the cards back in the box? I don't know, Mike. Hmm? Did I? Because that question's come up a lot, as has um, the Blink-182 song. Yeah. Let's pull a different one out, because hmm. that's the question we had last time. Which rapper featured on Katy Perry's 2010 hit? Yeah, Cal that one as well, Snoop Dogg, get going. Well, they'll all be done then, won't they? What's this one? Who featured on Ariana Grande's 2016 song, Side to Side? Oh, we've not had that one. Oh, there you go, then. No idea. Nicki Minaj. Oh, no, we have had that one. Oh, God. Well, there's just... I've got one left. I'll pull it out, see what happens. Which English rock star is known as the Prince of Darkness? Which is Ozzy Osbourne. We've had that one. Oh, God. Give it another spin. We need to chuck this one away now. Soundtrack. We tried to throw it away for months. What Leanne Rhymes song featured on the soundtrack? Can't back the moon, let me, me, me. That's the sign of a true gay if you could answer that before the question was even read out. The only song that I know is Leanne Rhymes. <laughs> so it was either that or nothing. Give her the moonlight. Oh, look, soundtracks again. <laughs> okay. Which band sang the theme song for Armageddon? Do you never me 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 a song? <laughs> We've had that one as well. Oh, piss off! <laughs> we have. Nobody knows. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Nobody watches that spit, Mike. <laughs> we know people flick and go blub, 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 through this bit. Oh, do you want another one, Mike? Do you want yeah, another one? I want another one. <sighs> Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams was the soundtrack to which 1991 movie? I'm sorry, Lee. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, you won't get this one. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross won an Academy Award for Best Original Score in 2010 for which movie? I don't know who those people are. No, we haven't had this yeah. one. No, we haven't, because I don't have any recollection of it whatsoever. I'm not playing this anymore. Well, how much time have we got left? Well, luckily, that's all the time, so... Um, Thanks for that. <laughs> come back, well, if you want to, after this break, as we redo A Crafty Queen we've done seven times before. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time for Lee to go through, well, work out why he's stolen things off a bloody drag queen in Crafty Queens. We don't say steal, we say permanently borrow, actually. Just wait, this is a fish. Yeah. It's a skeletal fish. Bejeweled. All will be revealed, Mike. Very All niche. will be revealed. Very Kath and Kim. Um, so we're going to make something lovely today. There's no theme to it. It's just called Lee Forgot till nine o'clock last night and I had to panic. So this is what it is. Okay. So um, we're going to make a lovely, lovely, just a lovely thing to decorate your boudoir or your kitchen. That kind of thing. So, you have a very, very jazzy piece of card. I do. Isn't that marvellous, that? Isn't that That's lovely? Like one of your outfits. Um, it is. I have a shirt exactly like that, to be fair. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a rug for which something will sit on. So, I want you to, to position that in front of you. Yay. Yay. It's been a little bit Australian then. That's what it's definitely Hi. Kath and Kim. I know. <laughs> um, um, it's nice, it's unusual, it's different. Yeah, it's nice, it's different. And then you've got two little bits of gold. Gold. Um, they're going to be... The... believe in your soul. 
they're going to be the fringing. Fringing? Fringing on the rug. So, okay. with your scissors, uh -huh. just want you to just cut little strips. Don't cut through it. Okay. You're just cutting the little strips. Doo -doo -doo. To give it the impression... That someone gives it a ...of fringing on a rug. Do you That's have any rugs rug. in your house? <laughs> That's very daytime TV conversation, that, isn't it? Was, it? yeah. Do you own any rug? I do own a rug. Do you? Is it um, a very lush? Um, it's, it's not lush, it's, it's just a rug. Just a um, rug. It's geometric shapes in, in teal and greys. Oh, do you feel it protects your knees when you're on all fours? No, because it's not in the bedroom. Oh, OK. Um, but the dog also enjoys it. Nice. And he does hump it. Nice. So when you when you have created your fringing on both pieces of card, both pieces of card, I'll just wait for you to catch up. You'll also, give me a pair of scissors that don't fit my fingers. Right. So, little snail trail of glue down each short side. Okay. And then attach your fringing. That, this solvent glue again. Not even slightly sorry, are you? No. There we go. Oh, well, I checked that it had some in, so it stopped you from moaning, because last week you moaned. Okay. Right, it's glued down. Glued down? Yeah. Okay, so now I want you to get this black... Tombstone. Yeah, it looks like a bit like a tombstone. But it's not going to be a tombstone. So what I want you to do is to fold in a little bit of the bottom. As they say, a couple of centimetres worth. So you've got a little ledge. Mm -hmm. I have a lip. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then on the underside of that ledge, a little bit of glue. Dooby doo. And then you're going to stick that right in the middle of your jazzy card. So it looks like a gravestone. But that's not what we're making. Okay. Okay, so fold it back a little bit so it stands up. Uh huh. And then I have provided you with a very thin, long piece of card. Yeah. Black card. Uh huh. Just with your with your scissors, mm -hmm. do that thing where you do that. Where oh, you make, curl it. Curl it. You don't want it too curly. Just a, just a slight curve. Like that. Yeah. Little bit of glue on the end of it. Mm -hmm. And then glue that on the behind of the tombstone at one side, just so it's peeking round the corner. Can you tell what it's going to be, Mike? Uh, instant regret. Okay, right. Glue done. Okay. Yeah. Now you've got a little gold wobbly tombstone. Yeah. That, I would like a little bit of glue on it. Okay. And then that goes in the centre of your black tombstone. Yeah. Have you done that? I have done that. Okay. Just put, just pop, just slide that to one side for a moment. Okay. And then I would like you to get hold of the the black oval mm -hmm. that I have provided you with. And um, there are two black sort of semi-triangle type things. Okay. Want you to glue those to the top of your oval with a with like a th finger span space in between. Okay. And then the two smaller red almost triangles, mm -hmm. there you're going to glue those into the middle of each larger black thing. Okay. Okay. I've also provided you with two googly eyes. Mm hmm Oh. You may stick those wherever yeah. you choose in the centre of the black oval. Okay. And then... And ultimately, mm -hmm. you've got a little red squishy, no, it's not squishy, a little red 
don't know what. Nail shape. Yeah. Bit of glue on that. Pop it in the centre. Okay, now, you need to bring your mat, rug, with the big thing on. Mm -hmm. Little bit of glue on the bottom, reverse side of the head. And stick that on. Oh, I say. Oh, right, okay. We may need to hold these up for people to see. I may need to reinforce it with something. The pussycat mic, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, just to, just, if that wasn't gorgeous enough. It's a very drunk pussycat. Yeah, I, we managed to reinforce it with some stronger card. You might have to just hold it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, cats like to eat fishes, don't they? Right, and that's why we've got this fish. That's why I've got these. <laughs> Big blob of glue on the back of your fish head. Okay. And then that, just put it where the pussycat's mouth would be. I have pre-glued mine so that it will stick. <gasps> Look at that. You would pay a lot of money for that in a... Good therapy. In a, in a top shop. Oh, you're pushing yours through. Yeah, it's got a pin on it. Oh, yours has got... Mine didn't have a thingy on it. Okay. And there we go. Now, we ha we'd have to do a little bit extra this to make it stand up. Perhaps a toilet roll behind it just to make it stand up. Mine will for like a second. Ew. Boof, dead. Um, but you get the... Oh, no! You get the... Oh. Anyway, there we go. Another successful crafty queen. I'm standing up on its own. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you've put scissors behind it. I'm going to do that. Oh, piss off! Oh. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to put a bit more glue in it. So remember, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, be a crafty queen. Very successful. I'm going to... These will be added to our... Um, our Etsy page, which has yet to be created. But if you look, everyone can see that the when we go to that camera, that they can't be stood up on their own. See, we haven't used mugs in which. No, to I, do the, that. the final version will be will be fully stand upable, which is a, obviously a word. Do give I'm going to call these pussy meow meow fish faces. Okay. I think that's that's the that's the working title for them. Anyway. That's almost the end of the show for this week. Just remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye. No! Stroking your pussy gently. I'm gonna hurt it. I'm gonna hurt your pussy. Aren't you looking? I'll take that.